everyone, today we will be doing a problem from the textbook. It is problem 1.5 and it deals with uh, some uh, cycles, instructions, and clock rate uh, type of mathematics. So we'll get right into it. Essentially we're given some information about three processors, P1, P2, and P3 over here. And what we're given is we're given the clock rate in gigahertz and the cycles per instruction, CPI. So, part A asks, which processor has the highest performance expressed in instructions per second? So we want to find, uh, here, let's go right here. Um, so this just lists out our givens and we're finding instructions per second. And then we're going to compare them all and find out which is the best performing. So we'll write down this equation. We're looking for instructions per second. And note that we have clock rate, which is considered cycles per second, as well as cycles per instruction. And we can just set up this equation so that uh, we can cancel out the cycles and we are left with instructions per second. So let's go plug it in and see how it actually works. For processor P1, we have uh, the instructions per, instructions per second equals 3 times 10 to the 9th, that's 3 gigahertz, times our 1 over 1.5 cycles per instruction. And that's going to give us 2 times 10 to the 9th for our instructions per second. Likewise, for P2, we plug in its respective uh, clock rate and cycles per instruction and where you get 2.5 times 10 to the ninth which is a little bit faster than the first one and for P3 uh, we plug in its clock rate and cycles per instruction and we get 1.818 times 10 to the ninth instructions per second so what do we notice from this uh, we can say that P2 has the highest performance in terms of instructions per second. That means uh, that it is able to do the most instructions per second. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's go to part D. I moved up the instru instructions per second into the table uh, for ease of use. All right, question, question B asks, if the processors each execute a program in 10 seconds, Find the number of cycles and the number of instructions. So we are given t equals 10 seconds is our time, and we need to find number of cycles and number of instructions. I have here uh, number of cycles, and we're going to say that's equal to cycles per second times our time, so our time in seconds. So we have time times clock rate. That's how we're going to get our number of cycles. And similarly, for instructions, we have number of instructions is our time in seconds times instructions per second. All right, for, for processor 1, P1, we have a uh, number of cycles equals 10 times 3 times 10 to the 9th. So that's our time, 10 seconds, times 3 times 10 to the 9th which is our clock rate, and that gives us 3 times 10 to the 10th uh, cycles. And for instructions, we have 10, our time, 10 seconds, times 2 times 10 to the 9th, which is our instructions per second, which gives us 2 times 10 to the 10th. So that's our instructions. And similarly, similarly we do the same uh, calculations with P2 and P3. And for P2, we get... 2.5 times 10 to the 10th, and for both cycles and instructions, and that's, uh, you can see that that is how that occurs is because we have a one uh, factor is our, um, it's the ratio between cycles and instructions. So we have a one to one uh, uh, ratio. And like if we go back to the other one, we can see that they're off uh, by the factor of 1.5 up here for the cycles per instructions. So you can see that for every two instructions, you have three cycles, and that's the 1.5. Okay, now, now number three, we have 
4 times 10 to the 10th cycles. And we have 1.818 times 10 to the 10th instructions. So that's how you figure out that part. And let's go next. Oh, this also shows you that even though we're able to complete the most cycles over here on processor 3, we still completed the lowest amount of instructions. So that's just something to think about, uh, how different processors uh, decode the instructions, and maybe processor 3 is able to um, complete the most cycles because it has the highest clock rate, but the way that it decoded the instructions into its specific cycles was uh, less efficient than the others, and it's, uh, it's the smallest in terms of instructions. All right, part C asks us, we are trying to reduce the execution time by 30%, but this leads to an increase of 20% in the CPI. What clock rate should we have to get this time reduction? So we're gonna use the same equation that we used from the part A, and that is right here. Instructions per second equals cycles per second times one over the CPI or cycles per instruction we're just going to modify it uh, to try to get the, we're just going to um, actually we're going to set the equation equal to uh, we're just going to plug in our new values so we want um, we want to reduce the execution time by 30 percent so our instructions per cycle is going to be multiplied by 1 over 0.7 because see right here we want uh, we want this to be equal uh, you want to do the same amount of instructions in 70% of the time. That's how you get it. You decrease the execution 30%, so you have 70% left over. Um, and then similarly over here, we have a multiplier of 1.2 towards our cycles per instruction. This is because we're increasing our cycles per instruction by 1.2. So for every cycle per instruction we had previously, we now have 1.2. So we can see this in practice. Let's put it into use. Oh, first we're gonna, we're solving for the cycles per second right here, so which is our clock rate. So we can uh, move the, the rest of this right hand side over and uh, to get this equivalency. So we have our clock rate equals 1.2 over 0.7 times our instructions per second times our cycles per instruction. So when we plug it in for P1, we get 1.2 over 0.7 times 2 times 10 to the 9th times 1.5. This is just the ratio of our multipliers. And here we have 2 times 10 to the 9th, which is our instructions per second. And then our 1.5 is our cycles per instruction. And that leaves us with our clock rate, which comes out to be 4 or 5.14 gigahertz for P1. And then for P2, we do the same thing. We have our instructions per second, 2.5 times 10 to the ninth, and our cycles per instruction of one, 4.29 gigahertz. And then for P3, similarly, uh, 1.818 times 10 to the ninth times 2.2 plug that in, get 6.86 gigahertz. So you see um, for all of these uh, processors to have the same performance, uh, given that they're that you increase their cycles per instruction by 20% and try to decrease their execution time by 30%, oh, excuse me, I guess they're not, we're not setting them all equal to each other, we're just decreasing their individual execution times, but we're also uh, increasing their cycles per instruction. So we're just figuring out the new clock rate that they'd need to have to uh, maintain uh, these givens. So we have to increase all of these by a pretty good margin, I'd say. All right, well, that, that does it for this uh, problem. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. Thanks.